That's all I got. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 34 through 36. Forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy 
endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Because I called upon the Lord in my distress, and the Lord answered me and sent me in a large place. The Lord is on my side, and I will not fear. What can man do unto me? 118, verse number 29, David continues on. Hold your thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endured forever. He says in 135, verse number 3, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. All throughout the book of Psalms, you will find that the Lord is good. 145, verse number 9, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all of his words. Psalms 147 and 1, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is coming. No matter what we are going through, the Lord is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. That's why it's awesome to have a relationship with God. Amen. Because even though the life may fall apart and you might lose your job and the economy stinks, right. we can still right. say the Lord is good because Amen. he's going to make a way Amen. where it seems like there is no way. Right. 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 But we know that our God is a healer. And we can go to him and say, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. We may be in the fight of our life, and we don't know where to go, but the Lord is our strong tower that we can run into. And we can sing the praise that the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. I'm just so thankful that we have a God who is a good God. And he's not just a good God, but he is a great God. He goes above and beyond all that we can ask or even think. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, our Lord is good. Our Lord is great, and is greatly to be praised. Amen. I can look back in my life with all the bad times. All the times when I felt like I was alone. All the times when I felt like God had left me. But all through those times, I didn't understand once you get through the bad times, you understand that God was working something out through the bad times. On the other side of the trial, it's easy to say, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Because you've come through, you've seen the miracle. But where the real faith is, is being able to stay and praise God right in the middle of the trial. Right, right in the middle of the test. Right in the middle of not knowing where you're going to go. Not knowing where the next meal is going to come from. Not knowing where the next provision is going to come from. When you are in the middle of that, if you can be like David and say, Lord, you are good. Amen. And your mercy endures forever. If I pass this microphone around, I guarantee you, each and every one of us can say of a testimony. Oh, at least one, probably multiple, probably at least a handful of times that you were down there in the pit. But all of a sudden, when you get your eyes off of the problem, and you get your eyes off of great God. Amen. Right? Right. It's an old saying that you've heard, I'm sure, numerous times. Stop telling your problem how big, or stop telling God how big your problem is, and start telling your problem how big God is. Right? Yeah. So you get into the middle of the trial, and you can just look at that problem and say, hey, my Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. He's going to make a way for yeah. me. That trial doesn't seem as hard. That test isn't so difficult. Yes, sir. Because when you truly understand that the Lord is on your side and the Lord is fighting your battles, you can right. rest assured and you can have peace in your mind and spirit that with God on your side and with God all things are possible. Amen. God has done some great things. I was uh, reminiscing. It was Friday. It was a year that my wife and I became the pastor of the church. It's been just a year and two days now. And it's amazing. I begin to reflect of where we have been, where, the, where we've been since I've even been a part of this church. We've seen some ups, we've seen some downs. But I've been personally, my spiritual life, ups and downs. But through it all, God has always been there. Through it all, God has always orchestrated everything out. And I, it may have taken me a lot longer to learn the lessons, so I stayed in the trial a little bit longer than I should have. But I want you to understand that through it all, the Lord has never left us. Through it all, the Lord has never left you. No matter where you've been, he's always been right by our side. He's that friend that sticks closer than a brother. He truly is as close as the mention of his name. That's what I love about God. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. We think about good people. We think about people like Mother Teresa. We think about some of these great men and great women of history that we would consider good. But I think about those people and all the great things that they've done for mankind. But think about the Lord is good. As good as everybody else might have been, the Lord is that much better. And when he came down from heaven, broke himself in flesh, dwelt among us, and went about doing good, and healing the sick, and raising the dead. And he took everything that he endured, the persecution, and going to the 
cross and then hanging there on the cross and watching being neglected by everybody else and he died there on that cross. He loved us. He was so good that he sacrificed his life that we might have life. And three days later, he didn't just lay in the tomb, but the angel came down, the earth began to shake, and he rose on the third day. We don't know the Easter story, but the Lord is good. He saw us all these 2,000 years from the cross and said, you know what, there's somebody down the road that needs my grace. There's somebody down the road that needs mercy. There's somebody down the road that needs a healing, that needs deliverance. So I'm going to sacrifice it all for them. When you begin to realize what God has done for us, it's easy to stand up and say, Lord, you are good. Amen. And your mercy endures forever. Amen. Yes. My life is a walking testimony. My dad passed away when I was seven years old. Moved halfway across the country to be with my uncle and live in this place. My mom meets my dad through a newspaper. You've all heard the story. He meets through the newspaper. They get married. Amen. My mom got baptized and received the Holy Ghost. And then we too got into church, got baptized and received the Holy Ghost. It seemed like the darkest part of our life. But we could still say, Lord, you are good. Because when I began to look back, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the pastor of an apostolic church. I knew when I was a child, I told people that I was going to pastor a church. When I was just a little child, I knew I was called to pastor a church. And everybody thought I was, since I grew up Lutheran, everybody thought I was going to be Lutheran. That's, that's cool. And they were, and hey, I knew at a young age, but God had a different plan for me. And God began to orchestrate some things. And yeah, I went through the loss of a loved one. My dad, who I was really close with and had a great relationship with, I lost somebody who was dear to me. But through it all, God began to work out a plan because it was a calling on my life. It was a calling on my sister's life. And then God began to orchestrate this to come to pass. And when I look back at the trial, it's easy to say, Lord, you are good. But right in the middle, man, it's tough. It's tough. And the problem is when we get in the middle of our trial, that's when the devil comes in and begins to talk to us and begin to get you to quit and begin to think, why do you even serve God? He's leaving you out high and dry. He's leaving you out there all by yourself. But you got to understand that while the disciples were in the middle of the storm, they were trying to go to the other side. At Jesus' request, he told them, get in the boat and go to the other side. And while they were in the middle of the storm, while in the middle of the sea on their journey, a great storm begins to come and the winds are raging and the waves are crashing on the boat. But he didn't leave them right in the middle. All the disciples had to do was quit hearing and say, Lord, you are good. Because right in the middle of the trial, guess who comes walking on the water? Guess who comes to visit them? Jesus, they see a shadow on the horizon and they look and they think it's a ghost. But really, Jesus began to show up right in the middle of their trial. It would have gone a lot smoother. They didn't have to worry so much if they would have realized all of the past miracle that they had seen Jesus do. They had seen Jesus heal the blind in the eyes. They had seen him feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. Surely they should have known that Jesus was going to show up there. Surely they should have known that he was good and his mercy endures forever. But right in the middle of the waves and the wind crashing, they lost sight of the greatness and the goodness of Jesus. But sure enough, he came walking right with their faith with that belief. Jesus came walking up on that water, began to calm the storm. And they said, hey, Lord, we're going to perish. He said, all you got to do is speak to the wind and to the waves. And he spoke to them and rebuked them. And it went back to normal and everything was fine. But if they would have realized on their journey when the wind started to pick up, you know what, the Lord is good and he's not going to let us perish here. All they had to do was think back on their past glories and their past miracles that they had experienced. And it would have been easy for them to realize that God brought us to it, that God is going to bring us through it. Amen. I wish all of our lives would be like David. Everything he went through, all those references that I read here in the book of Psalms, over and over again, Lord, you are good. Amen. And your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand? I don't have my notes, so that's all I got. Lord, you are good. We sang that song just a few minutes ago. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. And we shout and we dance when everything is going good. I'm telling you, there are some of us that are in the middle of the trial. There are some of us that are in the middle of a hard time. And it's hard sometimes to lift our hands and praise. And it's hard to really give God the glory and the honor. But if we would understand that God is good and his mercy endures forever. He's not going to leave you on the side of the road. He's not going to leave you in your dilemma. But he is going to come and he is going to help you. And he is going to bring you out. Jesus' name, would you begin to lift your hands right now? Just begin to lift your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. I'm over here in the corner. Would you begin to cry out to the Lord? Oh, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are good. And your mercy can do 